Um, I'm Kelly Moran. Um, I've been attending the Ransom since 2015, off and on. Been pretty solid since June of 2019. Um, I am part of Freedom Ministries. I'm a leader in Freedom Ministries. Mm-hmm. My 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 journey to God, you know, began when I was 12. Um, the Big Sioux Baptist Church. Uh, I was in there. Grew up very ritualistic and very legalistic. Um, but the Lord really didn't didn't really reach into my heart until I want to say December of 2017 um, when I got violated and went back to prison. That season, going back to prison, would save my life. I mean, I was, you know, and it's to a lot of people, you know, it, it sounds like a catchphrase, but it's really not because you know I I've lived it. You know, I was on death doorstep trying to kick the door down um around that time i was really really heavy in drugs i was bad um i was putting about three grams of meth in my arm a day and it got so bad where all my hope was gone i could not find no joy in life so the first time i tried hanging myself I was committed, I was done, you know, I, I wanted out of this world, you know, I, I, I wanted to go home, you know, I knew there would be consequences, you know, but I wanted to go home, you know, and, and, and honestly, whether I went to heaven or hell at that point, I just, it, I, I, I can say I didn't care because you would have to have the ability to care in order to care, and I, I really didn't have that ability at that point, so, um, I walked around with rope burn around my neck for about a month, month and a half, somewhere around there. But it was a couple, couple weeks later, you know, I was coming down really, really hard. And I was sitting on you know, the get go in West and 12. You know, I was sitting there, it was about midnight, you know, midnight, one o'clock. And, you know, and I'm looking for a pistol. You know, I got a buddy, you know, who's going to find me a pistol. You know, and I, you know, like I said before, I was really committed at finishing this. And, well, needless to say, that while I was searching for that, um, Pastor Jason from the church was online, you know, and in my head at that time, I was like, what's the pastor doing up this late? You know, it's a little weird to me, you know, but before I knew it, um, I had sent him a message, I need help. You know, and honestly, I don't ever remember sending that message. It just, it's there, you know, and then instantly, you know, you know, in my head it was like, yeah, you know, but he, he ain't gonna get back to me, you know, most pastors wouldn't, you know, especially being this late, but instantly he just, well, where are you at? What are you doing? What do you have? What are you doing? You know, and of course, me being, coming down and wanting to stay high, and wanting to be in there, you know, have that all committed in my head, Oh, I'm, I'm just wandering in the streets, you know. Well, he, he made me promise to come in the next day to the office, come in and talk to him. And sitting there talking with him, you know, it was the first time, first time in a long time I've seen anybody shed a genuine tear over me, you know walking out of his office that day and just feeling that that pain, you know, that love, that hope that he had for me, you know, God used that to save me, you know, he, he, he really did, he used that to save me because I, I had the pistol, it was underneath my truck seat, you know, right after that meeting I was driving out middle of nowhere and it was, it was done. I was, you know, that was my focus. Um, but, and, you know, it was earlier that I got violated, but it was December that I was sitting in the, you know, the shoe, the secured housing unit, you know, because I had gotten a fight, you know, and I was trying new medications and, you know, struggling with, the, with a lot of things, especially spiritual things. And, um, yeah, I was there that, you know, I recommitted my life to Christ, 
you know, and I made the choice that, you know, my faith and my hope in Christ, you know, is going to take precedence over anything this world has to offer. Well, I ended up getting get my uh, getting my uh, youngest boy back in June 12th, you know, of 2020. You know, and throughout that time, you know, I've always told him, you know, we we prayed together, we we talked about God together, you know, and we, you know, we kind of like walked alongside, you know, during the COVID thing, you know, but it was just over the phone. But you know, I've always made the comment, you know, son. My, my greatest goal in life was, is for you to come to Christ, come to know Christ. You know, what, you know, it would be my honor to lead you to Christ, but, you know, just someone to come lead you to Christ. And it was, I want to say June 27th, it was after I got back. You know, we were here at um, one of the Freedom Ministries, uh, um, baptism, you know, stone ceremony nights. And, well. And it's a funny story, he was up there at Pastor Jason calling for more people to get baptized. You know, and you know, I'm, I work up in the sound booth and I see my son stand up and kind of look at me. I was like, okay, what, what, what this kid do wrong? Because he gave me that look like, Dad, what do I do? You know, but he came up and he says, Dad, I want to get baptized. You know, and so I was like, all right, so well, had, had, have you even said the, the sinner's prayer? Had, have you even, like that? And he kind of, uh, it's like, no, you didn't, all right, come on, you know. So we sat down, you know, and I got to lead him to Christ. And, you know, that's not the coolest part of the whole night is that Pastor Jason allowed me to baptize him, you know. So I was I was able to baptize him too, you know. So that was that was really awesome, you know, that I was able to do that this year, and, you know. And and then, then August, you know, August 9th, I celebrated two years of sobriety. It took me a long time to call him Father, call God Father. Um, I never, I didn't grow up with, no, grow up with the Father, so a Father figure was non-existent. I mean, I've, I've had people who tried to try to fill that role, but the concept of the Father was where rarely exemplified in my life. You know, and. You know, and going through everything I had, you know, I I see it. I see it, you know, being on death's doorstep. You know, God said, no, I ain't done with you yet. You know, you, you, you won't listen to me now. I'm going to put you in a place where you have to listen to me. You know, you know, prison is prison, but prison for me was Bible school. I mean, because I was able to listen to what Christ was saying, and when I actually understood that concept of, of of him being being a father it made it easier for me to be not just a father but a godly father